And joining us now to talk about the fight against opioid abuse in our country is a man who calls himself now an accidental expert on the subject. He's former Fox News anchor Eric Bowling, who lost his dear son, Eric Chase, a sophomore at the University of Colorado, to an accidental opioid overdose last September. Eric, it is a pleasure to have you. Well, thank you for having me. This is a very, very important topic. And as I wrote on that CNN.com piece, I became an accidental expert because I never thought I was going to be this involved in something that had to do with, with opioids. I didn't realize the extent to which they're killing American people, uh, youth. Our, our, if you're under 50 years old, you point that out, it will kill more people under 50 years old than anything in the country, more than cancer, more than guns, more than car accidents, more than anything. It's an epidemic. It's a national epidemic. Um, and it's taking our young people out, out of uh, real productive life as well. If it doesn't kill them, a lot of them are ending up in rehab. Right. And, you know, walk us through when you got the call for yeah. the first time. And then you've used this to try to help other families. And what does that work look right. like? So um, this goes back to September 8th of, of 2017. And uh, it was the, happened to be the same day that, that I had spent a few weeks negotiating a separation with Fox. And we had an amicable, amicable split. We went our separate ways. Um, and I knew the next day it was going to be, oh, you know, Bowling's leaving Fox and there's all, going to be all these issues, but I wanted to get out in front of it. And it's, it's my lawyers and my agent. And I said, you know, we'll talk about it tomorrow, but let, let, you know, let me have this night with my wife. My wife and I went to dinner, and later on that night, after dinner, we were driving home. She's driving. Um, you get that, that, that phone call, that proverbial parent's worst nightmare phone call. It was a little late. It was around 1030, quarter to 11, and the phone rang, and it didn't make a lot of sense why the phone would be ringing, my cell phone. So she pulls over, and I, I, there's a gentleman on the line, and he's a young kid. I didn't even really know who he was. He's like, Mr. Bowling, please call Kayla right away. And Kayla was a, a girlfriend of his, a friend of his that he was kind of dating and seeing. I called her number that he had given me, and, and she was crying. And for some reason, you know, the first question I asked wasn't, you know, how is, it was, what, is he alive? And she said no, and she was crying. And I literally fell to the to the ground my wife was listening she fell out of the car onto the roadway I picked her up and we we sat on the side of the roadway and you know your life you think you can go through life and I you know for 15 years you know I was on on TV 12 with Fox and you know did all these other things you, you think you know what your next step is going to be at that moment everything got thrown out the window and we we just we went into this survival mode um, I found out the next day, and part of the reason why I'm so uh, passionate about this, the next day um, there were news, uh, TMZ came out and Daily Mail came out and said, oh, Eric Bowling's son committed suicide. And he committed suicide because he left Fox or something with Fox. And it, neither one were true, and I knew it, and we had talked to a coroner, we had talked to a detective, we had talked to our private doctor in, in Colorado. Um, and it was seven weeks before the coroner could come back and say they had already told us that it was, it was accidental. But they came back and said there was fentanyl mixed with Xanax in his system. And I've learned from since then that this is a killer, killer mix. You can't mix an opioid like Xanax with a fentanyl because it, it slows your breathing at the same time. What he had done, we found out subsequently, was he had purchased the Xanax like th millions of college kids do on college campuses. They're not prescriptions, but they buy them from whomever, and they're just regular Xanaxes, and, and they use it for anxiety. I didn't know he was doing it. Um, but this one happened to be uh, from China, illegally here, and it, had, it was laced with fentanyl. And fentanyl, if you don't know, it's, it's a, a strong, strong yes. painkiller. It can be 50 to 100 times more powerful than morphine. And if too much fentanyl gets into one of these mixes, it kills. The very next day after Eric Chase passed, there was a, uh, I think he was a, 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 a military man. He's, he may have been a lieutenant, uh, but his 19-year-old son died of a, a fentanyl overdose in Colorado as well, likely from the same bad batch. Wow. So I think you know so many people, as you mentioned, have come to know you and love you from watching you over the years and support you and your wife and your family. How are you doing? And the reason I want to ask you too is because I'm sure there are parents out there watching who have a similar situation or are struggling with a loved one who has addiction. And what words of wisdom can you give so, them for parents grieving? So immediately I went to Twitter and I said, look, this is happening. This, is ha this happened to us. If it can happen to us, we were just, just helicopter parents. We adored him. We spent so much time with him. I, was, I flew out to Colorado to spend Father's Day with him in June and he passed at the beginning of September. Um, 
and, and so talking about it a little bit made me realize that there are so many parents out there that haven't had this discussion with their kids who want to, who are now able to do it because they see if, you know, someone who's been on TV a lot is willing to, to talk about it. It's not such a, you know, a, a badge of, of a uh, scary uh, thing yeah, or the a, stigma. A dishonor, a stigma, right? And, and so I think, the, number one, you need to talk to your children. Number two, look for behavioral changes. Like I said, Eric was a, he was a very social kid. He, he drank, he smoked pot. We had hundreds of conversations about hard drugs and, and the dangers and all that. Um, and he would consistently see, say, Dad, I got this. Dad, I got this. Well, I believed him. His grades were good and everything seemed fine. But in the last few weeks before he passed, he had a, he had a very marked change in behavior. His personality changed completely. He didn't want to talk to us. He was blocking some of the phone calls. And, and it, was, it was a dramatic change. Now, if you look at Daily Mail, there's a Columbia University student, a 19-year-old sophomore, whose parents are telling their story about their son who died in an opioid overdose and had the exact same experience. A great kid, great family kid. All of a sudden, in the last couple of weeks before death, a, a, a marked personality change. I think that's important. Look, opioids has killed 175 people per day. Oh. If anything else in, in the United States killed 175 people per day, we would be all over this. We should be all over this from both an awareness standpoint, which is, talks about the demand for opioids, and a supply uh, awareness, which talks about where is it coming from. Are, are big pharma pushing pills on doctors and they're pushing them on, on patients? It's all of the above, and we need an all of the above strategy to, to create the awareness and save some lives.